and we're recording. Hi guys, uh, my name is Derek Campbell and uh, welcome to Ask Octopus. Uh, this is a new session we're going to be running uh, weekly uh, where we'll be covering some questions that we're getting back uh, from our users. Um, we have uh, Bob. Uh, Bob, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Bob Walker. I'm a solution architect focused, focused on customer success at Octopus Deploy. Thanks, Bob. And Ryan. Hi, Ryan Risto, also a solution architect, customer success, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, and uh, myself, I'm also a solution architect here, and I'll be taking on the first question. The first question uh, today, uh, and it's something that we see quite a lot um, of questions about, um, is what is LTS and really what are the benefits of it? Um, so, well, LTS is um, our long-term support um, version of Optimus. This uh, Michael Noonan uh, wrote a, a blog post in September about this, uh, announcing it, and this was released uh, just before um, Christmas. Uh, 2018 and um, what this contains is, is, is all it's effectively the same uh, as 2018-9 um, just a, a very stable version of that and that will remain and uh, that will remain in support for the next six months uh, and there'll be uh, the long-term support version will actually be um, will be released every three months. Um, so that will mean that we'll have a minimum of two in long-term support at any one time. Um, this is this is generally going to be useful for customers who have things like a, a test environment of Octopus. Um, and, you know, people who really want that uptime and stability, um, you know, and having, um, Bilst obviously having some of the latest features as well. And really, you know, naturally, it's something you probably, you know, most organisations will likely look at upgrading it every, you know, three to six months anyway, or, you know, maybe shorter, but um, certainly fall under that sort of time scale. Uh, what does that mean for the, the, the fast lane? Nothing will change. Um, that's actually going to remain. Um, that's going to remain as it is. There'll be, you know, those um, uh, fast, the fast lane will be released every four to six weeks. Um, you know, really, and what, and what the, the fast lane releases um, will be useful for is, is you know, you really need the latest and greatest stuff. Um, you, you know, you you know, you're on Azure. You're, you know, you're, you're really using everything. Um, you know, all the latest and greatest technologies, um, and also, you know, you also want to work. You know, this also means that you're working closely with Octopus as well. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's really that's pretty much it, um, and, and you know, and, and that's some of the things um, that you know it'll be really benefit beneficial for the users that maybe don't move uh, quite as quickly as others, um, and you know, people who really want that stability. So can uh, can you move between release lanes? So could I go between slow uh, the LTS release and then go faster? Yeah, yeah. Um, it will certainly obviously get a little bit more complicated uh, the more um, LTS versions there is. But yeah, you, you can effectively accelerate from the long-term support uh, or the slow lane to the fast lane and vice versa. You can also then go from the fast lane to the slow lane. You would need to wait for the next uh, slow lane release to be um, released for that. But yeah, certainly there would be nothing stopping you going, uh, going there. Um, but yeah, that's no problem. It would likely, um, one, one caveat would be that it would need to be a relatively recent uh, version um, of Octopus. Obviously, with the older versions, there's some compatibility issues that you would need to factor in. But yeah, uh, and I think that's that uh, one covered now. I'll uh, hand you over to Ryan. Oh, I had a question, Derek. Ah, yes, right. So on the LTS, so what makes it more stable? Like how 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 are we making that a, a more stable product? Um, effectively, it's the same product. Um, what it's going to be is is it's just that won't there won't be as many upgrades, meaning you know there'll be less likely uh, of any issues uh, in between different versions. Um, people who have or are on the fast lane tend to see um, the issues before others do. Um, so you're just going to have a bit more guarantee. There'll be a bit more QA around it, so that it is more stable. Are there going to be a lot of uh, 
LTS releases. So like right now it's like 2018.10.0, I think it is. I mean, are we going to have like dot one dot two dot three like right away or you know how's that going to look no actually no uh there is effectively it's just going to be every three months um and okay. you know after six months that will then move out of support um and at that point you would then need to move uh, into a newer version uh, you know that could be like, like you were saying bob obviously that could be one of our fast lanes or, or again just obviously an incremental upgrade on your lts version what if like a like a major show stopping bug was found in the LTS release? We'd still like issue a patch for that, right? Yes, yeah, that would still be addressed, and um, that would still be addressed. But yeah, that would be more for emergency patch, uh, a patch, and things like would normally be addressed by things like channels. Okay. All right, I'll share my screen. So a question I got this week, uh, which was pretty interesting, was how can I upgrade tentacles in a specific environment? Uh, so. Current users, you may know that once you upgrade to a newer version of the Octopus server, you usually get a banner on your deployment targets page that looks like this, upgrade all tentacles. Uh, when I was an Octopus user, that was, I would upgrade my Octopus server and I would come in and just immediately click this button so that all of my tentacles were up to date. Uh, so this customer actually asked, well, we, we want to upgrade our tentacles, but we only want to upgrade dev first and then do some deployments and make sure they're working. And then we'll upgrade QA, do another round of testing, then we'll upgrade our production tentacles. Yeah, and that's also, that doesn't scale super well just by clicking that button, because I mean, we talked to some customers that have like thousands of tentacles. And... Exactly right. So you can even see on our demo instance, we have over a hundred. So you click this, you're going to be waiting for all those tentacles to finish. They're going to, the task is going to kind of be blocking them from handling deployments. Uh, so you would really, if you have a lot of tentacles, you need to plan out when are you going to upgrade uh, your tentacles, especially if you're going to do them all at once. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is the tentacle is pretty stable, and even if there is an update to the version, it's usually backwards compatible. And we have this nice page on our docs page that we'll link to in the video notes. But it'll tell you, it's not just the tentacle, but also the Team City plugin, Calamari, OctoAXE. What if you have this version of the Octopus server? What versions are compatible for each of those tools? So if you're on a relatively new, uh, about a year old version of the Octopus server, any tentacle after 3.0 is compatible. So you don't necessarily have to upgrade your tentacles, but if you want to, and you want to do it by a specific environment, I'm here to show you how to do that, uh, which is you navigate away from the deployment targets page. You actually go to the environments page, which makes sense. And you see, we've also got this banner here. Let's upgrade all tentacles. We put it uh, that, that option for you in multiple places. But on the actual list of environments, if we look at our test environment, if we click the action menu, you'll see a upgrade all tentacles option here. And this text is changing soon. So it'll say like upgrade all tentacles in this environment or something similar. But if I click on this option, it's only going to upgade and you can actually see the, the name of the task is upgrade tentacles and test. So it's only going to grab the tentacles that are in that environment. If your tentacles are in multiple environments, it's going to include those. So if you somehow have them in test and production, you could end up upgrading a, a production tentacle. So be aware of that if they're in multiple environments. But it's going to grab my list of tentacles in the test environment and upgrade them. And once this test is or this task is complete, uh, my test tentacles will be upgraded and I'm free to test them and move on to the next environment uh, whenever I have time or whenever it makes a, a sense. And that is it for me. Uh, Bob, Derek, any questions, comments? That's super useful. I'm not going to lie. I, that one's stumped me in the past as an Octopus admin. I have definitely done, I've defaulted here uh, to update all. Um, but yeah, um, I just want to say thanks for sharing that because that's really useful even for guys like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was that a good question because I had never, uh, I'd never thought to ask that question. I just like, I would always click upgrade all because I always had a small number of tentacles. So, yeah, I never even thought about, I, I didn't even think about trying to do that. Yeah, I've always clicked that upgrade all. But uh, that's interesting about that compatibility page uh, for a while. I didn't even know we, it was that backwards compatible, like 2018.2 can still connect to a tentacle. Yeah, the tentacle. So uh, most of the work for the the actual deployment execution now is handled by Calamari. So the tentacle uh, is more the coordination. So yeah, there's not a lot of updates happening to it. Yeah, how, yeah, I think, how, how often? Go ahead, Derek, sorry, sorry about that, Bob. How often is Calamari updated? Um, Ryan? Oh man, I don't know. 
<laughs> I, it's like I it's I think it's similar to the tentacle where a a new when a new version of the server ships, there's a new version of Calamari. Uh, Calamari does get updated when you you can upgrade it through the same buttons that are on that page. But Calamari is also upgraded at deploy time if there's a newer version available. Awesome. Yeah, I think the most recent things I've seen for come through. Uh, like the change log for tentacles is like Halibut fixes or, you know, communication fixes. So it makes sense that it's a lot more, it's gotten a lot more stable since we ripped Calamari and, and the tentacle apart, so to speak. Yeah, de definitely makes things a lot more straightforward. Um, mm -hmm. Cause it's funny. We did have actually, we did, we actually had a, a slight bug with, I think it was 23.1 where it wouldn't display in the GUI. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was, quite a, that was a bit. So yeah, don't install that version, guys. Don't. But yeah, um, that's quite good. Cool. I'm going to hand this over to Bob now, who's going to answer the next question. Cool. Let me start my share. And all righty. So this was a really interesting question that I got in uh, our support channel, and it was, "How can I change my deployment process without affecting anyone else?" And I'm kind of curious, Ryan and Derek, like how did you guys typically solve that in the past? What would you, what would you guys do? Oh man, it really depend on the change I was making. Uh, one time I made a change where I moved all of my like static variables, environment-based variables back to web config transforms. Okay. Uh, so I cloned the project at that point because it was just too big of a change. Yeah. Um, and then there was really no way of testing it if you moved a very like you had to keep the variable there and move it back. But if it was something like I just wanted to add, to replace a deployment step or add a new deployment step in, I would use channels. Okay. Um, I would actually, I normally try, uh, went full out and, and cloned the project infrastructure where possible, obviously, and move some of the stuff um, to do it very independent, very manual, very time consuming, unfortunately. Yeah. And yeah, that was part of it as well. Um, doing the cloning, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, especially with projects that you have dozens of steps. I mean, I only have six steps in this particular one, but imagine this had 50 steps or something like that. Uh, I would also do something like I would clone the project if I wanted to maybe make a change to the step template and I knew it was a pretty in invasive change and I only wanted to test that one particular thing, but the cloning didn't really work out so well. Um, when you want to make onesie twosie changes, but they're pretty significant changes. Um, and you have to kind of remember every little step and every little thing that you changed. And so I kind of want to show you how we sort of resolve that one particular issue. And like Ryan said, we started using channels for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this process, specifically step number six, and I'm going to change this over to do, uh, to use a worker. Cause right now it's deploying a package to a specific uh, target with this particular role. But I don't really need to do that because my deployment is I'm, I'm going to be deploying to uh, a database and I'm using SQL authentication. So I can run these on a worker because I just can, I can supply a username and password. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to consume a target or a set of targets for the simple deployment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to channels and I'm going to add a channel. I'm just going to call this draft. And it uses the exact same life cycle. I'm not gonna make it a default channel. That doesn't make any, any sense. And I'm not gonna worry about versioning rules. All I wanna do is just create a, a separate channel for this. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change this step. And I'm gonna change this to run only for the default channel. So what this means, what I've done so far is I've come in here and I said, okay, any releases that come through, like, somewhat, like a, another developer on my team, they do a build and that build will kick off a deployment. When that happens, everything will work the exact same. Uh, steps one through six are gonna run. But now what I wanna do is I wanna add a new step in here. In this case, all I wanna do is I wanna run a script. So I wanna say deploy database package, and I wanna run this on a worker. And I'm gonna change my worker pool over to the database worker pool. And I already have my script configured, so I'm just gonna copy that in there because I'm sure you guys don't wanna watch me type. And I'm going to do a couple things here. And I'm going to first, I'm going to add a project or package reference. And let's just go ahead and grab the package ID because that's stored as a variable in this for this particular project. So let's go ahead, package project deployment. And then if I look at my script, I need to call this. I don't know why I did this, but this is just the way that I did it for this particular example. 
And then I'm also going to configure a couple features. I want to do uh, configuration variables and configuration transforms. So when it's all said and done, this is basically going to act like the deploy a, a package step. But the big difference is, is this going to run on a worker? Um, and it's only it's going to extract that package, and it will just use that package extraction just for the lifecycle that worker. Because this is a database deployment. I don't need to have that package sitting out there till the end of time. This is just a very temporary thing. So I'll go ahead and click on save. Oh, I made one small, I forgot to do one small change. I'm gonna change the channel over here to do draft. So now I'm gonna have this only run for my draft channel. So if I go back through my process, steps one through six are gonna run for the default and then steps one through five are gonna run for the new channel as well as step seven. So if I go ahead and create my release, so I want to run for you, Bob. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Kind of just cranking through that real fast. Uh, so because you didn't specify a channel for the first five steps, I think you explained this, but just to clarify, because because it's not showing uh, which channel they run in, they're going to run in all channels. That's correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's very similar to like the, think of like the environment filters. So if, you, if, oh, I, yeah, yeah. if I don't specify an environment, it's going to run for all environments. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on, I'm going to save this. I want to deploy this to development and I can actually see the steps that it's going to run two, three, four, five, and seven. So you can see step six isn't going to, would not run in that particular channel at all. Uh, Cause step one only runs on staging and production. So yeah, that's a really nice, easy way to make a change to your deployment process without affecting anybody else. And when I'm done with this work, what I would do is I'd come in here and I would just delete my step. So I'm just go ahead and do that. Yeah, it's okay. And then I'm gonna change this to run for all my, all my channels. I mean, you do a test release and you make sure everything's working, but that's how you would kind of clean it up. And now I've made that change to my deployment process and I didn't really affect anybody except, uh, except myself as I was trying to test through this, uh, the deployment. Very cool. Yeah, nice, nice example of what channels can do for you if, with testing out different processes. Yeah, and this, I think this works really well when you're doing um, specific changes to your process. Like, if you're going to make wholesale changes to the entire thing, like you're going to you're going to change every single step in here. Then I think cloning at that particular point would work. But if you want to make very targeted changes, I think this is a good way to do it. Derek, do you have any questions? No, I thought that was actually okay. much, much, went really quickly. And uh, no, I thought that was much, much quicker than uh, my approach. Uh, yeah. <laughs> guys. All right. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, if you have an interesting question you want us to answer, uh, go ahead and email us at support at octopus.com because you might get the answer sent back to you rather quickly. And then we'll probably answer it on this particular uh screen share or webinar or podcast or whatever you end up calling this thing. The user Slack as well, Bob. Uh, oh yeah. The user Slack is also a really great way to, you can just, I think it's probably just email, uh, ask the question in general or advice or anything like that. We kind of monitor all of those channels. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks guys. <laughs>